In today's video, we will be seeing about the Chola Village Administration. Before getting into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel without subscribing, please do subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. It will be of a great encouragement for me. Please do click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into the video. Chola Administration They had a good administrative system which was centralized. So Chola administrative system was a centralized administrative system and it was a very good administrative system. The king was not absolute. So king did not have absolute power. It was divided. So Chola administrative system was centralized but the king was not absolute. The council of ministers assisted the king. So we have already said that king was not absolute. The power was divided. So king had a council of ministers who helped him in the administration. The intimate group of the king was called as Udanakutam. So there was a group of ministers or a group of people who were very intimate to the king. So the king always discussed the matters of administration with them. That group which was very intimate to the king was called as Udanakutam. The empire was divided into many divisions called as Mandalas. So for the easy administration the empire was divided. So how was it divided? The empire was divided into many divisions and these divisions were called as Mandalas. During the time of Rajaraja Chola I, there were eight mandalas. So during the time of uh, the rule of Rajaraja Chola I, the whole Chola empire was divided into eight mandalas. Mandalas were divided into Nadus or Kutam. So first full empire was divided into mandalas. Each mandala were divided into Nadus or Kutam. Nadus in turn were divided into Ola Nadus. So you have to see how the division goes. First empire, empire is divided into mandalas. Each mandala is divided into Nadu. Nadu again is divided into Ola Nadu. Village administration was looked after by the Grama Sabha. Then the smallest unit of administration was village and the administration of village was looked after by Grama Sabha. So the Cholas had a good systematic way of administration. The administration was centralized. King was not absolute. A council of ministers assisted the king. The king had an intimate group which was called as Udanakotam. And for the easy administration, the empire was divided. So the empire was first divided into many divisions called as Mandalas. During the time of Rajaraja Chola I, there were eight Mandalas. Mandalas were divided into Nadus, Nadus in turn were divided into Ola Nadus and the smallest unit of administration was village and the administration of village was looked after by Grama Sabha. Now let us see the village administration in detail. Village autonomy was an important feature of Chola administration. So the autonomy of village was the important feature of Chola administration that is the villagers themselves took, took care of their administration. People of the village looked after the administration through their own elected representatives. So people of village had their own elected representatives and these representatives looked after the administration of the village. Uttarameruru inscription of Parantaka 1 gives a clear information about the Chola village administration. This is a very important point from where do we get information about Chola village administration. The Uttarameruru inscription of Parantaka 1 give us a clear and detailed information about Chola village administration. According to this inscription, that is according to Uttarameruru inscription, the village was divided into 30 parts called as Kudumbu. So before we have seen how the empire was divided into Mandalas, Mandalas were divided into Nadus and Nadus were divided into Ola Nadus. Now here in villages also there was division for EC administration. So according to Uttarameruru inscription, one village was divided into 30 parts. It was called as Kudumbu. 
one representative from each unit was elected for a period of one year so from each unit there was one representative and this representative was elected for a period of one year the members were elected through a lucky draw system called as kuduvalai so how were the, these people elected they were elected through a lucky draw system that system was called as kuduvalai so in village administration village autonomy was a very important feature of chola administration the people of village looked after the administration through their own elected representatives we get information about all these from the uttara meruru inscription of parantaka 1 according to this inscription village was divided into 30 parts it was called as kudumbu one representative from each unit was elected for a period of one year and how was this representative elected the members were elected through a lucky draw system and that lucky draw system was called as kuduvalai now let us see what is kuduvalai kuduvalai means it is a lucky draw system we have already seen the villagers assembled in the temple on the day of the election so on the day of election all the villagers will assemble in the temple names of candidates to be elected were written on a palm leaf and it will be put in a pot a small boy randomly will be asked to pick the leaves one after the another in the presence of everybody and thus the representatives were elected so it was a very simple system on the day of election the villagers will assemble in the temple the name of the candidates uh, will be written on a palm leaf and that that will be put in a pot and a small boy will be called and he will be asked to pick the leaves or the names one after the another it will be done in the presence of everyone and the name of the person taken will be the representative so this was the way how representatives were elected and this is called as kuduvalai and the elected representatives had to work in annual committee garden committee tank bund committee etc so what was the duty of these elected uh, representatives they have to work in annual committee garden committee tank bund committee all these committees they had to work these committees were called as variums so these all these committees were called as variam and its representatives were called as variya perumakkal so committees were called as variam and the representatives of the committees were called as variya perumakkal these committees worked for 360 days so they continuously worked for 360 days the duty of the village committee were protection of village property collection of taxes protection of lakes temples forests all these were the duties of the village committee they had to protect the property of the villagers they had to collect tax protect lakes temples forests etc so kuduvalai was a system in which the representatives were elected and what is kuduvalai on the day of election villagers will assemble in the temple name of candidates to be elected will be written in a palm leaf and put in a pot a small boy will be asked to pick the leaves one after the another and that will be the name of the representatives thus representatives were elected and these representatives had to work in annual committee garden committee and tank bund committee these committees were called as variam and its representatives were called as variya perumakkal committees had to work for 360 days and their main duties were to protect the village property collect tax protection of lakes temples forests etc the resolutions of the committees were always written so whatever decisions these committees make will be always written and kept as a record that is the resolutions of the committees were written central administration did not interfere in the village administration unnecessarily so this was a spe- special feature which we studied in the beginning that is village autonomy that means a central administration will not interfere in the village administration unnecessarily without a proper reason the central administration never interfere in the village administration So now let us see the minimum qualifications to become member of village committee if someone wants to become a member of village committee during chola time what was the minimum qualifications which they needed the candidate should possess a minimum of half acre of taxable land 
the first qualification was the candidate or the person who wants to become a member should possess minimum of half acre of taxable land in his name he should have half acre of taxable land he should reside in his own house built in own site so he should have his own house which is built in his own land he should be more than 35 years and less than 70 years of age so there was an age limit should be either more than or uh, 35 and less than 70 years of age he should possess knowledge of vedas brahmanakas and commerce that the person who wants to become a representative or a member should be well educated he should have knowledge of vedas brahmanakas and commerce and last was he should possess good character so these were the five minimum qualifications to become members or to become elected representatives It, the candidate should possess minimum half acre of taxable land he should reside in his own house built in own land he should be more than 35 and less than 70 years of age he should possess knowledge of vedas brahmanakas and commerce he should possess a good character now there were a few disqualifications that is if the person had all uh, su some disqualifications he will not be allowed to become the member or he will not be allowed to participate in the election so what were the disqualification if he is a member of any committee continuously for previous 3 years he is disqualified for re-election so if continuously 3 years a person has become member of committee then again he can't go for re-election okay so he should if uh, if he has continuously um, participated or become a member for 3 years then he is disqualified for re-election those in committee who do not submit accounts and his close relatives so if someone does not submit their accounts and their close relatives will not be allowed to participate in election so everything should be perfect then only the person can participate in election so anyone in committee who do not submit his accounts and if he does not pay tax and his close relatives cannot be participating in election so disqualification if he is a member of committee continuously any committee continuously for 3 years then he he is disqualified for re-election then those in committee who do not submit accounts and his close relatives cannot stand for election another disqualification is alcoholic thieves and those accused of murdering brahmins committing adultery all these were disqualifications for participating in the election or becoming the members these were some of the minimum qualifications and disqualifications followed in village administration and some scholars have termed the chola village administration as small democratic state so the villages themselves were autonomous they acted like a small acted like small democratic states themselves so that is the speciality of chola village administration that is village autonomy so disqualifications uh, included first thing was if anyone continuously was a member for 3 or more years then they cannot uh, go for re-election then those in the committee who does not submit their account or his close relatives cannot uh, participate in election and alcoholic thieves and those accused of murdering brahmin and committing adultery also cannot participate or become members and because of all these some scholars have termed the chola village administration as small democratic states because they had village autonomy so all these are the points regarding chola village administration I hope you have understood all the points very clearly. This is a very important topic considering your uh, PUC syllabus. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comment section. And also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you all soon in the next video. Thank you for watching.